I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original Five Fingers of Death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not breathing now. Obviously, I'm breathing. What I mean is, you can't hear me like, ah, Steve. Ah. Yeah, so you okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? People Sorry. might people might think that's the kind of relationship we've got, the way we're doing <laughs> churning these things out. Well, that's true. We've got nothing better to do. i got nothing better to do. I'm in lockdown. Yeah. We're, uh, we're full on batting the hatches down mode here in the UK. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. But uh, never fear, I am, I am keeping myself busy. I'm, 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 all, I'm on YouTube a lot. Mm -hmm. Not that that really sort of, you know, not that I'm doing anything different than I am do normally. But <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've been watching some ropey, ropey things. Um, a load of Americans doing Jeet Kune Do in the garage. What you know, they've mm. got. I have to say, they've got nice garages in America. They have. Yeah. They're nice and big. But yeah. uh, oh my God, some of the stuff they're churning out, you know. And uh, the thing with Jeet Kune Do, I was watching it. I can't. What's it called? New England Jeet Kune Do or something. And uh, bless the guy, like he's so confident in what he thinks he knows, and he's always <laughs> he's got all the po uh, posters of Bruce Lee up in there. He's reading the quotes of Bruce Lee, you know. He, my Sifu, my Si Gung tell, tells me to go and watch movies, you know, this, that, and the other. And then, yeah. you know, he's doing a self defense skit with this guy and actually kicks him in the balls. And, you know, this <laughs> poor guy. And bear in mind, this guy was covered head to toe. He looked like a Ninja Turtle in all this uh, protective equipment. And somehow he snuck a, a, a kick to the groin in and he just went down like a sack of spuds. It was hilarious. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, oh my God. And then. The best bit is with all these Jeet Kune Do lot, you at the end, you know, at the end of these vids, they they do their salutation, and I, yeah. you know, and you know, like I was clean shaven when I started watching this salutation, <laughs> I, you know, it went on for about five minutes. I mean, yeah. Christ's sake, you know. I did have a guy. Um, I, I can't remember whether it was in England or Scotland, but yeah. uh, anyway, he, he went to a Jeet Kune Do uh, club. And he says uh, they kind of respected every every kind of martial art that they Rip off. took bits from. <laughs> well, whatever, yeah, call it what you want. But basically, by the time they'd finished doing all their different bows and that, it was time to go home. <laughs> it was just really, you know, yeah. I mean, if you're going to take parts from a martial art you don't respect that martial art because you're not practicing it you're just i guess copying it or stealing from it or you're being a voyeur you're uh, yeah you're peeping yeah. tom through the window <laughs> yeah so so what's the point in doing all those bows to it when you don't really respect it if you respect it you'd practice it yeah. so you know stop that kind of crap oh it's just so. It's crazy. The, fir the first book I got was actually um, Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Are you eating? Are no. you eating, James? No. No. In class? No. <laughs> me? No, teacher. No, 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 no. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> what? No, I'm just sucking a tablet. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I've got my cup of tea, my tablets, my phone, yeah. my sweet. You know, I've, I'm all prepared. I'm. You know, that's how I roll. Um, mm -hmm. First book I ever got was um, the art of G the art the, the the art of scientific street fighting, Jeet Kune Do by uh, Sifu Lamar M. Davis the Third, and that was the first book I ever got. And I thought, because you know, when you first when I first got into martial arts, I was like, 
books on Jeet Kune Do, they really appeal to you because the way they're, you know, it's all about directness, you know, ooh, just, just, just hit him and stuff like that. That's fine, you know. Mm. Of course, you know, you, as you progress, you kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, change, change your uh, perception a bit. But, yeah, it was um, it was interesting. Yeah, I've got Tao of uh, Jeet Kune Do. Oh, but did you, books. hang on, did you actually read yeah. it though? Well, I read sections of it and, you know, I'm not a great reader, to be fair. I mm. did, I used to read a lot when I was young, but now there's videos and everything. You get quite lazy, don't you? But it is, it's it's kind of a collector's piece for me. And I had a student who used to um, bind books. Right. So he, he, I gave him a load of my favourite books and he, and he, he bound them to hardbacks because oh, okay. they were just paperback books but yeah. you know what martial arts books are like yeah. so uh, yeah he bound them in hardback with gold leaf writing on them and so right, on right. and yeah that was one of them i wish i'd have had that done in leather i did have one book that i was really keen on history philosophy and technique it was called right and um who was that by i, I can't remember um the guy who was uh, coaching david Carradine in the in, um, um, David Chow. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was him. Yeah, as he was he, in it a lot. He was. I'm not being funny. He was friggin' useless. Yeah. Well, t let's face it. But but anyway, yeah. I got that book, and I, I I used to really revel in it. I loved it, and I was reading it constantly. Yeah. And then I started learning martial arts. You know, started getting a little bit more experienced, and and then when you re you revisit a book like that, you just yeah. think oh my god what was i thinking it's a bit like i mean what got me into martial arts in the first place obviously i was watching um bruce lee jump over the uh, the gate in the big boss and yeah. do a bit of fighting on a on a, a film critique f uh, program called cinema yeah. and then it was later on it was called film 70 whatever it uh, was and right. right the way through the years and uh, yeah it was barry norman his name was yeah, i think yeah. And yeah, anyway, uh, I just sat there when I was about 13, I watched it and that was it, I was hooked. But, you know, you, you, and then of course, David Carradine, the, f the, the, the series came out and I was, oh. I just absolutely loved that. I yeah, just went, the, I went, oh, I absolutely thing, loved the it. The thing about that, the message was just great. But yeah, unfortunately, I, yeah. the martial arts were shocking. Yeah, well, you don't know that when you're no, a kid, and or no. when you're a beginner, or whatever. No. And uh, but I did used to like the um, the temple kind of scenes. They were great. Well, you you got those me, messages. Yeah. Well, you mm. got me into that. That's why I called you old man. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I think I, I found it, and I said, "Well, have you ever seen this?" And you said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah." And then, didn't you used to walk around in bare feet or something? As and they, what did they yeah, do? Yeah. Well, my nickname at, in, at sea school when I went to sea college was was Kung Fu, in actual fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 because, uh, yeah, I was just totally crazy about it. And that's where I had my, I got a tattoo on my left arm, which is Bruce Lee's signature, which was out of a book, uh, a magazine that I had with Bruce yeah. Lee's signature on it. And everyone was having like mum and dad written across their forehead and yeah. stuff. So, you know, love and hate and all that across yeah. their knuckles. And and I, and you know how you kind of peer pressure and so on. I was sixteen, yeah. And so I had uh, Bruce Lee's signature uh, stuck on my arm, and it's been there ever since. Mm. Yeah. I've oh. never I've never covered it up or anything like that. So oh, well. yeah, but yeah, I used to walk around when I was about thirteen, fourteen. I used to walk around in bare feet. I could walk across anything. <laughs> um, really, now I could I could walk across, you know, all sorts of stones and you know the yeah kind of cold dust or wherever it was or all, all over the paths in the park <laughs> i could yeah I, I used to walk around people used to pick on me because i was walking around in bare feet yeah um oh, yeah yes yeah but um now you know I, you touch my feet i get crazy it's just so, <laughs> so ticklish right but, um we've right so you know. let's get back to uh, back on track um because <laughs> what track I, I, <laughs> what do you mean what track yeah this is a professional <laughs> okay. operation this so i've got a question for you actually i've got a question from um from facebook i've got a i've had a david jones messages and uh he's but he asks hi steve and james you see first off he got that wrong it's james and steve 
<laughs> Hi, Stephen James. When you're looking to start Kung Fu or any art, what should you look for in an instructor to know you're going with the right one? Oh God, that's a difficult question mm. because it's 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 extremely hard, isn't it, to to find uh, someone who's willing to tell you um, well, uh, an awful lot of honest truths. Um, I guess you remember the quote. The quote I like from Bruce Lee was, mm. "In the sanctity of the unknown, under such a veil, men honour you as masters." Yeah, meaning if you don't yeah. know any different you'll believe anybody and yeah. you'll can call them a master so you know yeah well they call themselves masters that's that's the big problem i think i think you've got to it's the same as looking for a driving instructor but i guess they've got to know their stuff but this but it's difficult for you <laughs> to know whether they know their stuff isn't it I that's could... that's i i found it really hard i mean i just went with anyone i went to karate um when i was 13 that was the first thing i did it was 10 pence a lesson yeah and uh yeah i just went crazy the guy's name was john he was he was a lovely guy short stocky guy mm. uh good at what he did you know and um but he kept getting swept by one of his yellow belt students yeah, right. and they, you know he was quite keen and then he punched him in the face because as he was getting swept he couldn't stop him sweep him but he thought if he sweeps him i'm just gonna punch him in the face and that was that was his kind of escape from oh, it well okay. it didn't after really escape yeah. after the fact yeah he, he fell down and the other guy got a bloody nose but you know <laughs> so and but the other I, I can i can understand the yellow belt getting a bloody nose because he wouldn't have known how to protect himself mm. but he certainly knew how to sweep and um mm. that john should have been able to avoid a sweep but for some reason he just couldn't so the question what's the answer what do you think um i, d I don't want to make light of it because it's a really important question um but i would i would just simply say if he's as long as he's not afraid to answer every question you've got and i think the most important thing is to write down those questions you know it, it isn't you know it's whose teachers whose teacher and so on you know mm. my teacher was this and his teacher was that and his teacher was that people come out with so much crap about who their teacher was mm. and some you know especially if they've left organizations they they just you know go into the ether and suddenly find all sorts of people mm. that they can they can train with and oh. then go oh respect them and so, so on. so yeah that's that um at the end of the podcast I've, i'm gonna i've got a, a brucey bonus for you so bear All that right. in mind so I, that's just jogged my memory but anyway okay. go on yes yeah, so yeah just make sure that that you you ask as many questions as you you can and make sure that the guy uh, i think you can pretty much tell where the guy is lying you know i think cross-examine them right and 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 don't allow them to pretend to be the master they've got to be people first yeah, but at what point does that sort of i mean does your i mean you've got to cut as a as a as a new as a person starting martial arts you've got to sort of you know give some leeway haven't you so they can get their point across and and if you're a beginner the whole thing is how do you know what they're talking about because you know right so watching all these freaking americans in their garage doing jkd they all <laughs> talk they all start bringing into it science you know e equals mc squared and you know yeah. um, you know power is mass times acceleration stuff like that it's just like as soon as you hear people you know basically bullshitting you with with science and pseudoscience you know i i sort of I'm, I'm there going yeah that's that's when i kind of switch off and just go into you, a you've got to try stand. yeah you've got to try to follow a logical path i mean when people come to us the first thing we say is you know uh we're going to create an argument between us we're going to make an argument right a, a good um a good argument that so i want you to ask as many questions you possibly can yeah. and i'm gonna you know i'll give you some details and answers and whatever but what i'm also going to do is i'm going to ask you questions s to find out you know to s to give you the opportunity to see logic right so for instance what's the most important thing speed or power okay and I, I, that's a simple question i ask them and obviously if they say power mm -hmm. i'm going to give them an example of why it isn't 
as important. If they say speed, then obviously they're on the right track, etc., etc. Of course, that's only an opinion of someone who does kung fu. Someone who does, you know, um, karate or whatever might, you know, differ yeah. in that. So I tend to say, okay, uh, punch yourself. You know, if you've hit power, turn your your palm the other way around so you punch in the back of your hand. Mm. And when you punch the back of your hand, you know, I always say to them, punch your back of the hand several times. They do that. I say, does it hurt? And they go, well, yeah. I say, well, stop hitting it so hard. Then. <laughs> and then I say, make a single knuckle with your middle knuckle and now punch it. Same power. And of course they don't because it's going to hurt. Yeah. So there you go. You don't need power. What you need is good technique yeah. and you need a, a, the capability of understanding technique. Mm. So, uh, you know, quite obviously, scientifically and, and, you know, logically, a single knuckle, just like a high heel, is going to have far more penetration. Mm, or it's concentrated than, power. Exactly. So, so when they see that, they can understand that speed is more relative than, than power. If you can hit the right target with the right weapon, you've got, you know, a martial art. Actually, so that's, that's basically the way they're right into well, it yeah enjoy a conversation i enjoy a conversation with beginners yeah. i like to educate people because it's really important that whether they join you or not whether they're interested in what you say if you can educate them a little bit then when they go they they're armed with a little bit more information yeah and they go a little bit more warily to the next group or yeah. the next club or whatever and hopefully they will build more and more confidence and more and more information so you know and ed educate them because and then you know they may come back mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to me whether they come back or not what matters to me is that they don't go and feed the these you know people that are just you know sprouting out the woodwork building up their own style and mm -hmm. you know thinking that they know it's yeah uh, it, it's so sad but yeah that, that's life you know today yeah it is well okay so you know in other words you know get ready to have an argument dave all right um <laughs> get ready to get kicked out dave <laughs> <laughs> right but that actually kind of segues into my next question for you because i want to talk i want to get a bit technical for all the uh for all the traditional kung fu practitioners listening and maybe for the other stylists who are listening if you are um martial science what is the definition of martial science according mm. to you hit me well i'm not a i'm not an educated person but um as far as i'm concerned <laughs> martial science is anything to do with fighting so it's basically working out the fastest way to strike someone with the least amount of effort but the maximum amount of energy that that is really the purpose of of a martial art to try to get the best you know power or the best weapon if you like mm. um you know with the most destructive power right. to do the job yeah so but you you just said that's that's uh, a, a thing a, a martial art what did you say again it's um the basis of any martial art or something i'm sorry i just well it, it should be the basis of be. any martial right, art okay. and but it isn't yeah right. lo logic isn't the basis to a lot of martial arts but that's that's due to its history or it's you know it's it's direction yeah or it's leadership yeah that's what it, that's down to that's nothing to do with the martial art you know martial i'm sure all martial arts were one time useful but there are many people that, that take over these martial arts or that, that learn these martial arts and then subsidize movements for something they can do as opposed to try to sustain the actual style. Now, if you don't sustain the actual style and it becomes your martial art, then it's only you that can learn it. And, and if you're a big guy with muscles and, and you're quite tall or whatever, you're not going to understand the needs of a, of a small guy or a small woman or whatever. So you're going to, you know, expect them to be capable of doing the things that you could do. There was a guy in Scotland. He he, learnt, he, he went to the brown sash course. No, he went to his black sash grading, actually. He's in right. Scotland, one of Tom Carey's students. Right. And he... Um, he went, he went to the Black Sash grade and started telling Mastio uh, how the style should be. And 
What? Say that again. Yeah. What was he? What? What do you mean? He was just saying how he saw the style and how it should be and what you should do in the gradients and all that kind of thing. Anyway, the the point is that. <laughs> he, all right. He, he, he obviously failed his black sesh. Oh, right. He started his own group up. Yeah. And what he what you had to do is you had to do the first set in the box splits. Never. Yeah. So oh. how many students do you think he could sustain? <laughs> in the box splits That's yeah because he could do the box splits yeah he expected everyone else to be capable of doing the box splits so he wanted everyone to do the first form whilst in the wow. box splits and and so you know that is you know the kind of capability or the lunacy if you yeah. want that some people insist on mm. you know it, it's like a lot of them i'll ex expect you to walk over hot coals and you know maybe climb up a wall backwards you know there, there's all sorts you know mm. kick trees yes <laughs> yeah Co copy you, you, van damme yeah, yeah because oh. they think that's what you know you should be capable of doing yeah and they have no understanding of education and how to start teaching people and then to build them to become confident so what why is it in your opinion then or experience that kung fu is a great um, sort of e equal um, it, it can it, it can appeal to, to, to all sizes all all ages all builds um, you know any yeah. type of person why would you why would you suggest that kung fu is, is 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 that way inclined over other martial arts out there well again it depends on whether it's a, a genuine style or not mm. okay because people do kung fu as as I said that guy in the box splits yeah that's not going to appeal to many people is it no. so it's obviously got to be a genuine kung fu so i can only speak for my own uh, learning mm. and uh, and, a, and as a genuine uh teacher in 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 yao and and so on and and other people uh, that have taught me over the years like that but obviously he's my main um teacher mm. and um yeah so <laughs> people need to be capable at first understanding the syllabus and then being taught the uses of that syllabus and because there are so many different uses for each technique and that's obviously comes from the education of that technique then it can work for pretty much everybody so it's not like you you don't ha you know you're a big guy so i'm gonna say right um you know you punch punch and you know kick ass whatever if you're a small guy it's your punch is not going to make a great impact on you know a, a big guy mm. okay but so you've got to understand target You've got to understand distance. You've got to understand speed. You've got to understand move around, moving. You know, um, yeah. Uh, transference of uh, position. So if if you're a small guy and you've got a, a brilliant footwork, then you can obviously out outwit a, a much slower, taller, bigger guy. Yeah. Uh, and so the targets have got to be relative. Often, if you think about it. Um, is a little logical thing you've got a, a six foot guy and, and a four foot guy and if the four foot guy's got to punch the, the the six foot guy in the face is punch quite obvious going to be shorter. it's going to be shorter exactly it's going to be short anyway why make it any shorter by yeah. trying to punch him in the face two foot higher than you yeah you know and more more so in fact because it's from your shoulder so you know it's it's a bit stupid to yeah. to think that so you've got to you've got to learn from people who will teach you the martial art yeah right. and they will teach you the usefulness of that those those techniques not just you know call it something it's, and it's it's throw great, yourself around yeah i always the, the way i always thought you taught it was a very very uh used it as a great equalizer like you know it, there was something for everybody you know you could take from it, it like you said if you're big if you're small or whatever there's always an option for you mm -hmm. no matter what which is great then, and, and and but i just want to say that when i was um in uh, in, in afghanistan we mm -hmm. uh, we used to do a bit of spot of judo you know when we had some free time because yeah. you know i i used to do boxing with them and stuff like that but you know 
because the majority of them just didn't want to get hit by me and i'm not blowing my own trumpet but you know they weren't very good but we used to uh train a bit of uh, judo and uh there was a couple of the fellows i used to train with who were really really into judo really good and and one of them actually was really uh, really quite technical with it a guy called jay um fantastic bloke and um anyway so we just used to have you know every other day our little judo lesson if we have free time and uh then the one one day we we uh we had a guy come and join the group his name was bean now this guy was about seven foot built like a brick shit house you know he was huge and real did they call him everything. bean stalk <laughs> he was huge had not done anything in his life you know no martial art nothing like that just pure raw power and all the rest of it anyway so we start we everyone started rolling around with him you know and within the confines of the uh the judo what we were doing nobody and i mean nobody could do anything with this guy in terms of mm -hmm. hold him on the floor in fact as soon as he got you he just lay on you and that was you done you couldn't yeah. to struggle out and, and totally from expected that, yeah totally expected and of course you know i i studied with you prior to that and i was just i i knew what would happen but all the others were so so adamant that you know yeah it's technique as well it's technique it's technique it's like yeah it's technique up to a point if you've got someone of a similar weight category than yourself and if you react before they get on top of you right, not afterwards right right you know now you know and that sort of cemented in me the the philosophy of of the kung fu that we always you know um it's it's about that that before you even get to that stage you need to have done something you know you need to have been proactive mm -hmm. in uh, or avoid that stage in exactly the first place. exactly yeah and it's just like wow you know so, so there's a good example of a power um of p raw power not mm -hmm. transferring uh, you know into a what you would deem as a martial art but in, in actual fact it's more of a sport isn't it judo let's be fair it is yeah. i wouldn't class it as a martial art in that way it's, i don't think judo people would either no and, and and that you know that's fair enough you know respect yeah. and I, I you know you know do enjoy all, watching all the throws and everything it's great but when you're when you're faced with someone like that size my god couldn't do a thing with them could not do a thing with them yeah yeah so what happened that was it he just is he, he the guy that ran at you no no that was another one yeah ah. that was a, that was another one he ran at me when we were that was back in northern ireland he ran yeah. at me in the gym and because they they were they were training they were trying to show me sort of someone runs into you you grab them and do a hip throw or something onto the mat behind you and uh i i just I, the way i learn is a bit slow sometimes but i i was trying grasping this technique anyway next thing i know is this huge guy he's just running at me thinking i've picked up the technique i haven't and immediately i just reverted to what i know and uh snake creeps down you know the tai chi i just went sh straight under him and i threw him over my shoulder steve he bounced yeah. into the wall oh it was a fr friggin hilarious it was he was like you weren't yeah. supposed to do that i said sorry <laughs> sorry i uh i just i just did something you know that i wanted to survive with yes exactly when you've got someone pelting at you yeah. it's like jesus yeah. christ but you know but um, yeah, yeah this, this is the thing when when you got big guys like that and then they say you know grappling's the best thing since sliced bread and then you go well that's that's absolutely great if you if you tend you know uh, sort of 90 i don't know 90 kilos and above 110 kilos 200 kilos whatever mm. yeah. <laughs> you know if, if you've got 250 pounds you're gonna you're gonna be you know pretty difficult to to hold down mm. and then you get some young guy come into the class like he's he's you know dripping wet he's he's like five stone mm. and um he's got no chance and and a girl comes in to learn self-defense and you're holding her down like that and you're expecting her to get out of it oh, it yeah. ain't gonna happen so so what all you're teaching her is that she's hopeless she's she's she she's helpless yeah. in effect as soon as a, a, a big guy gets on top of her she's helpless yeah. and she may as well give in and you can say oh she can do this and do that and no she can't she can bite 
and she can you know knee you in the groin and she can poke you in the eye but then you're not gonna you know you're not gonna do that in the, the sport no as such so but but why does she need to do that if she can stand up and fight before you get to her if she can move if she can recognize. If, she, if she can avoid yeah, yeah. if she can yeah yeah, but, but, so she, but there's so a lot of things she can do before she ends up on the floor underneath you that's yeah, for sure yeah there's yeah absolutely but that's that's sort of the argument from a lot of uh, the people who practice sort of uh, the, the grappling side of things it's like well well you know 99 percent of fights end up on the floor yeah and and nine and and a hundred percent of them pretty much start standing up <laughs> yeah so. right right yeah no it's uh it's it's <sighs> yeah, I do, it's I do. what you do between the standing up and the lying down on the floor that matters yeah, right. <laughs> not what you do when you're on the floor yeah. it's what you do while you're standing up that matters just remember that okay you know and if you're a small person and you, you expect to survive on the floor against a much bigger person who's on top of you well you should have thought about something to do before you got down to that position <laughs> I I think that seems that seems reasonable to me. Yeah. I don't I don't want to be, <laughs> but like I said, you know, with that guy, I just I was like, there's nothing you could have done with him. He was huge. He was absolutely huge. Yeah. You know. Well, you, there's things you uh, could have yeah, done. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Pinch him and yeah, but within the twist his groin and yeah, within, within the confines of the rules. Yeah, exactly. I understand. You know, and that's yeah. sort of yeah. yeah. So that's no, funny. Oh. But right, what I want to do is ask you. I, yeah, can you tell I got questions written down? Nah, <laughs> nah. It's always good to have a bit of a script, yeah, James. You know, well, you know, and you know. Normally, we're like uh, like like Master Yao's golf game. We're all all over the place, <laughs> you know. Um, so, what? Don't tell him I said that. Okay. Right, white sashes. Beginners to white sashes in Laogar. Right now, mm. now we've got to be sort of reasonable here. We can't. You can't there's only so much you can explain audio you know on a podcast or whatever but if you were to give any advice to um white sashes beginners rather to white mm -hmm. sash what would it be what would you say to them in terms of uh you know their progression or you mm -hmm. know whatever Go. yeah i think anyone who starts doing martial arts tends to look at the technique and try try to emulate the technique but but they don't tend to think about what is it for so they do the example of what they've been given but don't consider anything else they also consider it to be just a single line whereas you know every time you move your body if you move with rotation and you know there's there's also i mean I'm, it's too technical for beginners i suppose but they've just got to i think in a simple answer they've got to make they've got to feel that it's useful to them they've got to feel that as they do the movement they're they're doing something they're performing something they're not just doing the movement they're performing it so that it has a purpose yeah and i think I, if they practice with a purpose yeah then they'll improve much quicker and they'll get more excited about it i, I tell you one of the things that you see a lot of beginners um doing um i think is when they're training the hand blocks and the kick blocks obviously you're in the confines of a syllabus you know i'm in the yeah. left fighting stance i'll step punch you step back block with your left <laughs> punch counter and what i think one of the biggest things i see is them simply not reaching or simply yeah. not giving enough of a stimulus now i can you know i can understand if you're a beginner or whatnot you're a bit nervous and you know you don't know how to do but i think a, a great start would be just just try and reach the target you know obviously we've got to consider they're not controlled yet and whatnot but uh, yeah but you don't need to make a punch james this is the thing people say okay step and punch no don't step and punch step and push and then you're going to make an effort try to push the guy backwards he's going to stand there for you yeah. he's not going to get hurt you get your left foot forward step on your right push with your right there's number one the hand block yeah. okay push him and see how far he goes back and push him in the center of his chest so he also knows that you're actually trying to reach him to the target that yeah. you've been designated okay yeah. so initially you're going to basically step and push him and then he's going to as he 
knows now that you've got the capability of pushing him mm. as you push him he's going to step away and as he steps away the energy of your push is dissipated yeah. it's because you're stepping further away the distance is greater the the, the, the push is dissipated yeah. and then he can start to apply uh, the block which really is an attack it's not a block well, it's yeah. actually an attack there are no blocks in kung fu yeah did you know that there are no blocks in kung fu well funny enough i did yeah uh, we use <laughs> yeah i know i'm sorry uh, maybe i wasn't talking to you maybe i was talking to our audience that guy you mean you mean the one person yeah yeah dave yeah there you go <laughs> for you dave yeah so yeah it's it's just simply i guess it's just the use of words chinese um words are, they can't be directly um interpreted into perfect english okay yeah. so it, it tends to be more of a parry a block is there's no such thing a block so, if you throw a punch and i catch that punch in in my hand like yeah, i'm catching a, a baseball yeah that's a know, block that is a block yeah. because it's you, you you're stopping all that power a deflection yeah. or a parry is redirecting the energy yeah and that's what it should be but the block in itself is the use of the wrist as a weapon yes and so as we and it's a rotation as well but people as beginners they won't know that and uh, no. i'll be honest with you i know black sashes that don't know that so oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's you know that's another story i i always i always kind of emphasize to 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 when i'm teaching beginners certainly with 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 the hand blocks the early ones uh, all of them but particularly the early ones is that the the movement is perhaps the most important part of the initial um, yeah. understanding of it just that moving back mm -hmm. um, you know you, and you can look at all of uh, all of them are based on movement you know but you're not going to stand there are you you know you're moving no. back. but if you look at the way beginners are taught they're taught um, from A to B yes. okay so the movement like a block or a punch is the beginning of the movement and then the end of the movement a and then to b but what they really should be recognizing is the journey between those mm. whether it's a block whether it's a punch whatever it is whatever movement you make has significant um sections within it so you could say you know the i mean obviously it's got to be a visual thing here but a hand block could be you know one two three four five a b c d e kind of thing until you get to the end which might be f or g or whatever mm, right. so there's so many different positions that that hand can be useful in and depending of course whether it, someone's grabbed you whether someone's punching you whether yeah. someone's holding you whatever it's it's just simply that they've got to recognize that you can't if you miss the journey then you've missed the martial art you're talking so just try and i just uh, kind of elaborate on that for people listening so you're talking about um the hand prior to the actual so if we're talking about the hand blocks hand block yeah the hand yeah, okay. prior to the actual attack starting is in a position whether it's inside of your chest and we'll um, call that a and we'll call that a as it moves out there's there's motion in the arm it's moving forwards You're well up and, oh, okay is it is it moving forwards or are you moving backwards well, okay forwards <laughs> backwards mm. yeah well if you're moving backwards then the hand isn't moving at all it's just changing shape but it's not moving to the side everybody so just so uh, yeah know, right yeah, there's no you... left and right in the hand block number one it doesn't swing like frigging karate forward and backwards <laughs> do you see where, I bet there's see... a lot of, I bet there's karate guys out there going what do you say what are you saying we do this we do this no. so this is the well, problem though talking about it on a podcast you can't do it but what you see because if i say something and rightly so you'd say no it's not is it is it is it and yeah. it's like how you know you it's impossible isn't it it's an impossible yeah. task you know it is but but having said that i mean when you look at techniques uh, close up and you see the way that people try to develop energy before they do the technique mm. unfortunately that is simply going to be too slow yeah. because you know they're going in one direction and then back to the original position and then onwards to the target so that is just a very poor 
yeah. uh, scientific principle. The, it the just hand, doesn't going to happen. The hand is moving forwards relative to your body. Hey, hey. Yes, or the, body, or, or the body is moving backwards relative to your still. Oh, you, 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 you had to say that. Okay, yeah, yeah. but you know, but it's so, so. Well, hard, the, the thing is, how can you be moving forwards if the other person is coming towards you? So, as the I'm person closing is the gap, coming. Though, I'm closing the gap. But the gap <laughs> will be closed. Well, I'm just with expediting your... that by moving <laughs> before them. The gap will be closed by your arm. <laughs> But will not. But the gap will be expanded, giving you more time as you move backwards. Sorry, I'm just going to go and buy a gun. It's a lot easier. Yeah. What? So, like, you're quite an expert with a gun, aren't you? You've. Uh, you, where are you in America? What was it? I was. Uh, well, I've competed in the the, the 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 practical pistol championships and came. Uh, I, I think I came like sixth in western pennsylvania yeah, yeah I, the yeah. first time i shot out there was did something called speed challenge because and, yeah. and they, they loved me they was like where did you learn all this i said the uk but you've got no guns in the uk man i said i trained with <laughs> toy guns and they looked at me and just like shut down they said oh my god yeah. 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 I said, I tried airsoft yes yeah, it yeah. airsoft yeah but anyway go, going back yeah. on track when you're looking at beginners then what are the some of you know some fundamental mistakes you've seen a lot of over the years then might well the, the the thing is when you're doing we're talking about the hand block if if people do lao then they'll understand what we're saying okay mm. one step sparring some people will call it yeah, okay yeah. where you're standing in a fighting position where your left foot forward and you step towards the person and you punch with the right hand step on the right punch on the right kind of thing and you're punching to their center now often people the biggest thing that most beginners do is they overstep so the hips are now adjacent to you know kind of a jar uh, at an angle and mm. uh, which means that the the angle of the energy is going to go towards the left it's gonna it's like if you're standing in a street and there's a street fight going on you watch this street fight and the guy looks like he's swinging at at his friend or, or it is uh, his you know fighting yeah, uh, enemy if you yeah. want adversary yeah and but in effect he's trying to do a straight punch but because he's overstepped his fist will literally go over to the to the left his yeah. right fist will go over to the left so he'll swing it and that's only because it's following his hips it's following his foot footwork yeah. and so if you can get your footwork correct and you get it dead straight and level and uh, you put your hands on your hips and you step forward and you remain straight dead level to the target mm -hmm. and then you put your fist out then you will have a dead straight uh, punch yeah. eventually okay yeah no it's uh so, yeah. that that's one of the things uh, i think the ha the first hand box really are teaching you how to attack yeah. they're not teaching you how to defend because if you can learn how to attack well you can do all the others yeah well you we need you need before you need a good attack before you can defend well mm. yeah so yeah i always like that one um i want to ask you so I've, I've, we talked a bit about martial science and you've defined it as the fastest possible technique in the with the least amount of effort inflicting maximum damage which you know kind of like that um yeah. i'm going to ask you in laogar we've mm -hmm. got some sayings now little tidbits from uh, master yao and he's probably got it from his grandfather and so on and so forth now one of them is uh is a, is a saying by master yao it's uh, an, an inch longer is an inch stronger but an inch closer is an inch more dangerous now can yeah. you explain to everybody what that means well once you get that close it's very difficult for people to defend against you isn't it so that that's why really if you think about a shorter person get it in close what does the big guy want to do then he needs to try to get back to gain his regain his uh, advantage his only advantage is that he's got a longer range that's his only advantage right. St say that again because i'm not very smart and the people listening i'm pretty sure are not very smart <laughs> 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 that's my subscriptions gone I, yeah anyone <laughs> who's zero. listening to this can't be that smart is that what you're saying yeah. is that really? why you keep on asking me to listen to it yeah you know <laughs> 
Can yeah. you say that again? But in this, it just it break, go as simple as you can. So an inch longer is an inch stronger, but an yep. inch closer is an inch more dangerous. What does that mean? It means that a smaller person, if he closes the gap between a, you know himself and a larger adversary, it the other the adversary, the larger person loses his advantage of distance right of reach you mean yeah of range right yeah and and so invariably tall people like that will try to regain that advantage or they'll try and grab you of course but while they're grabbing you or trying to hold you i mean take a look at boxers when they get tired and they get and they're fighting and the guy mm. comes right in and so on that, that you know the only thing they can do is grab hold of each other yeah. you know and hold on to you know and then a, try and throw a rabbit punch occasionally trying to throw a you know an uppercut against the ribs or against the the, the face yeah. uh, while they're holding them until the referee parts them so it's it's kind of you know because obviously they're in a com contest yeah. they don't want to stop fighting so you know but that's what they do when they when he gets too close and you just can't do anything so so that's it that's an inch closer is an inch more dangerous what do you yeah. mean by an inch longer is an inch stronger what's that mean well, the guy who's got the, the longer reach has a lot more time to develop energy. It's like saying, okay, you've got a left forward hand, a lead hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In Southpaw. Uh, sorry, in Orthodox. Yeah. A left lead hand yeah. and a, a rear right hand, which is going to be your reverse punch or your cross or whatever. And of course, the cross works simply because it's got more range to develop. The left lead hand is going to be able to go faster because it's closer. Okay. But the reverse hand is the one that's important, isn't it? It's the strongest hand because you've got the time to develop the energy. Right. Most people need time to develop energy, right? So they need the distance. to. So if you give someone that distance to create energy, they're going to be able to throw a lot more uh, power towards yeah, you. Right, but if course. you close the gap, I mean, if you put your palm on someone's fist while it's by their waist and they try to punch, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. If you put your fist, your palm further out and they punch, it's going to be painful. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. So uh, it's just simple logic. That That's it. Okay. S yeah. Well, that okay. was as clear as mud. Thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry it's all right you said i, I all need the right words. i, you said I all need the right to words. just in the wrong order yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i i i think what it, you really need to do when you're talking about techniques um you need to understand who you're talking to because one of the things about teaching is you may teach the same technique to some to several people but you'll teach it in lots of different ways because the different people need different ways to learn it some people are visual some people you know want you to write it down for them or they'll make notes yeah. and and so on and some people listen to what you have to say they're audible you know the auditory i don't know what they call it yeah. but it's it's just everybody's got different ways of learning and and sometimes you have to approach people who are timid who've got less um I wouldn't say interest they've got as much interest as everyone else but they mm. they tend to be a little bit more less confident in what they're picking up so uh, they, they'll constantly need we in uh, you're talking about um sayings in China in in uh, Laogar Mastio mm. has this one saying about the three logs remember those yes yes yeah? so when you're teaching people yeah the f the one people certain people you can teach like a round log you kick them once and they just keep rolling yeah then then there's the square log you kick it once and then you have to kick it again and again and again until it learns you've got the and iron logs the iron the log. iron log is the third log and you kick that and all you can do is hurt your foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah be be around log people yeah be around log um uh, yeah i love that so I don't, yeah, well, you've always you've said that to me for ages. I love that. I don't know why you said it to me. Is it, am I? Am I, am I, am I, am I a round log? Um, I right, don't answer that. Another Laugar saying for you. 
right, and I'm going to sort of butcher the Cantonese here, right? Kun Mo Sam Sing. What's that mean? I haven't got a clue. You tell you me. You know speak what Chinese. it means, Mr. Newbie. You know what it means. I know you Re know what it means. Remind me. Right. Kun, the fist. Mo, never. Sam, three. Sing, sounds. So the fist never makes three sounds. What's that mean? Uh, well, the thing is, it, it you've got three weapons. Okay, let's just look at it this way. You've got you've got the sword makes one sound. Right. Okay, so explain. Well, if you, if the other guy's got a sword and you've got a sword and you you make an effort to cut the guy and you don't manage it, you better be careful because that guy's <laughs> going to know more than you. <laughs> Saying it with a stick. You know, it's two sounds. It's a clash and and a retaliation. Okay, and if the guy then blocks it, that's three sounds. You're in trouble because he knows more than you. Okay. Yeah. So the the fist. Uh, then you talked about the sword, the stick, and the fist. Yeah. Yeah. So three if, punch, if someone, three sounds. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. You know, a block, if you want to call it a block. Uh, divert, parry, or whatever. Counter, counter, and finish. But if he's blocking you. And it's like <laughs> if he's blocking you several times, yeah. Then bugger off, regroup. Yeah, yeah regroup. Right. Because if if that has to happen in a fight, then there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> he's too so. good. You shouldn't have picked on him. You shouldn't have started <laughs> yeah. on him. Yeah. Oh, right. That's See? that's that's just basically a, as a simple saying to yeah, try to no, make like, you understand. Yeah. You have to finish the fight as fast as you possibly can. So yeah. no more than three sounds. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like I like that yeah. one. I like that one. Yeah. And I know yeah. you knew what that meant. <laughs> I, you, you know me, James. I, I am. I don't profess to. I, I've never really retained the Chinese that much. Just yeah, the yeah, basic yeah, 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 stuff. And the, the reason for that is simple. Why do I have to pretend to be Chinese? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. I'm Why saying, do I'm I saying. need that? I, I, I'm not interested. I'm more interested in. I mean, that's how people like to say. Well, tr you know, we're traditional. We do this, and then they come out with all these this Chinese mm -hmm. terminology, yeah, Chinese term, yeah, yeah. and you go, well, that's that's absolutely great, you know. But is it going to make you better? Absolutely, absolutely. But at the same time, you've got to acknowledge that if we are to preserve a culture within we're not preserving no, a culture no no the, the the well i would argue well okay if you if you say we're not but i would argue we are preserving a cultural heritage of china so when we lose say you look at the names of the forms for example you know you know what we're going to yeah, do that, just just not call them by their names their chinese but many people many, many many people don't call them by their chinese names right. james because I'm i not don't saying speak it's important no i know that but this is a good argument this is because i don't speak chinese no okay so therefore me attempting to pronounce the words correctly yeah. i'll be constantly corrected but the worst thing is i'll be corrected by someone from Kwantung province, yes. but then I'll be corrected dialect, yeah. from by someone from Beijing. I'll be corrected by someone from Hong Kong, yeah. and uh, do you know it's just yeah, I shot, understand. I totally yeah, understand. leave it. I'm, I'm not worried I, I, about it. I get that, but don't you th like at the, on the same you know level? Can't can't you just say you know? Yeah, it would be nice just to um, keep the names of the forms. So we, you know, this is yes, what yes, called yes. Because we, that, well, that's why I said I always retain the basics. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not going to retain. Yeah, you know, I, I, different I, I, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, when I'm ordering a Chinese, I say number eighteen. You know, yeah. I don't need to. I don't mention anything else. But you see what I mean? It's like yeah. Some stuff well, uh, I think we can retain just because. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let, let right. The second I'm going to explain some. Hang oh, on, go I'm going yeah. I got to explain something about that big oh. Chinese because <laughs> when I came to Canada, I I've been eating at Chung Ying's in Birmingham for for nigh on forty years. So explain to people what Chung Ying's. Chung Ying's is one of the best restaurants in Birmingham, Chinese restaurants. Okay, yeah. well, I've, you know it certainly was in my time. That's for sure. Um, and they got Chung Ying Gardens as well, which yeah. two restaurants near the Hippodrome. Really, you know you want to try them out anyway i came to canada so i'd, I'd go to chung yings and i'd say uh, i'd like some chung fun 
okay which is a, a really nice dish that i have as a, as a dim sum yeah and then i came here and they sold it there in one of these because they sell chinese everywhere in yeah. vancouver obviously right. a lot of that beautiful chinese food anyway i went there and oh i'll have some of that chung fun please and they're going what hadn't got a clue ah really <laughs> hadn't got a clue what i was talking about yeah. so th there's just a typical example of yeah. of why don't bother unless you're going to learn the language no. properly and then you've got to learn the language over a period of years obviously and you've got to learn the right language so yeah. you know if you're going to learn chinese learn mandarin because yeah. it's pretty much spoke everywhere but if you're going to you know learn cantonese you know hong kong and that the southern mm. area then then fine but don't expect anyone to understand you somewhere else mm. because you know they're not necessarily going to do that yeah, yeah. it's it's like being a geordie <laughs> Well, hey man, what do you mean? Mm, yeah, no You're one understands away. you. Just keep your mouth shut because no <laughs> one understands you. Okay. Yeah, says the guy yeah. from Birmingham. Yeah. I, I, say, yum, yum. I, <laughs> I say that with the tongue in cheek, of course. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I've got um, a lot of people that friends. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I absolutely, you know, 100% agree with what you just said totally you don't need to know the chinese to make you a more proficient martial artist it's mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's not necessary what's what's important is that you understand the purpose of what you're doing i mean the bottom yeah. line um but this but, is this is what i meant james this is what i meant about you're rustling um, you're rustling again so, uh, sorry i was just moving me mic a little bit i i'm sorry um yeah when we talk about culture we're not talking about chinese culture we're talking about an art that is you know was derived in the the east in china mm -hmm. and 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 but it's it's been in the west for 40 years yeah, absolutely. and I, I don't want to change it i want to sustain it yeah. but i'm not sustaining the culture i'm sustaining the art yeah. it's it, it that's that's the thing i can't i can't sustain the culture i wish i could mm. but i can't and and there is such a lot of culture yeah, yeah. um and and it's it, it should be celebrated but i mean it's like saying okay every single kung fu club learns the lion dance yeah. sorry they don't yeah right they they don't yeah. and if they did oh but what about the unicorn dance what about the dragon dance yeah they don't yeah. so it's that's the culture but you but yeah you, you're absolutely right like I, i've never yeah i think in in laogar particularly we we, we use the, uh, the 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 cantonese um because it's it's written in the syllabus a lot of the time doesn't it yeah. that's really how we use it but hey we all um, butcher it in certain ways but you yeah. watch but you but seriously you 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 listen to any uh the sort of wing chun guy on youtube he'll talk mm -hmm. tan sao pak sao hyun sao wu sao fuk sao and you're like what the hell are you talking about and then he, he goes just like that and she, oh i know that yeah that's that's, that's harvest hand or you know yeah. do you see yeah. what i mean so i understand mm -hmm. it's not important in, in, in many ways it detracts mm -hmm. from your learning because a F lot of people so is harvest hand I, I know it better in cantonese right you know, it's, but it's it's you know the, the 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 thing about that is for me is a lot of the time people are hiding behind this the culture yes yes they're, yes. they're trying to produce make make out that they are so they know stuff yeah. that you don't know yeah by oh, doing that yeah. and then, well come on yeah i know what you mean yeah. i can call yeah. it this name but you yeah. can't so obviously i know more about it or whatever yeah well i mean we both know you know that's the the uh dim mac master oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one who's yeah yeah the one who's the only per only white man to go into the mountains to learn it and oh, that's uh, right that's what it said on his uh advertisement yeah, yeah. and for one pound are we getting bitchy again are we getting bitchy? <laughs> sorry no no i'm just saying that if someone is going to come out with that kind of crap and they they're going to expect it then to work and they're, they're not doing enough they're not putting enough energy into the training of the technique they're trying to put more they, they're trying to blind people with science yeah right and and unfortunately people aren't interested in i mean some people like the idea of the the um 
you know the the terminology and so on in, in in every shape and form but it doesn't make you any better it just you know speak your own language guys yeah and you'll be able to understand a lot better and certainly keep the it's like uh, doing ballet yeah you speak a little french when you're teaching yeah. ballet yeah but it doesn't mean you can speak french yeah Okay, so no one's going to understand you after a certain few syllables. <laughs> you know, once once you've gone through a couple of moves, they go, "What the you're talking about?" Yeah, bonnet. Did just you show me. <laughs> yeah, just show me. I, yeah. I, even I can say pirouette. Yeah. Doesn't make me a bloody ballet dancer, does it? No, no, I understand. I understand. Um, right, point taken. All right, sorry, Mister Newby. I <laughs> handbags at dawn with you, isn't it? Woo! Um, another Laugar saying. Okay. I've got to ask you about, right? Uh, so not T stance, not eight stance, whatever's comfortable. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> well, it's, 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 not so, it's not necessarily what's comfortable because it right. isn't necessarily comfortable. Okay. All right, then. It's, it's basically that you don't have your one foot behind you uh, side on like a T step and you at the same time, you don't have him pointing directly inwards together. Yeah. So it's a very tight eight stance. Right. It's written, it's it's an eight stance because a number eight is written with two lines, one one going across the top of the other, both turning kind of at a 45 degree angle, yeah. 90 degrees to each other, yeah. one's halfway up yeah. uh, the other. Anyway, who needs to know that? No, um, just... Yeah, so so that's an eight stance, okay? that's yeah. why it's called an eight stance. So both one, you, your back foot is turned pointing towards your interned left foot yeah. that's an eight stance yeah. okay mm -hmm. so yeah well it's not that uh, all it all it refers to is the fighting step or the fighting stance it's not quite turned in so much right but it isn't turned out either like it you think the thing you see if you want to step forward you you we've got a thing on next to our foot just above our foot it's called an ankle <laughs> and that only works in conjunction with the rest of the foot okay so if your feet are facing forwards you will be able to flex that ankle to enable you to make a step if on the other hand you turn that foot outwards sideways and then try to make a step mm. you're going to have to lift the whole leg to do it because mm. your ankle don't work in that yeah. way yeah that's a t-step it's not meant for going forwards so you know anybody who fight, stands in a fighting stance with their foot sticking out behind them mm. is not going to be able to go forward very much and there lies a lot of the problems with some of these um uh, martial arts that, that profess you know to be fast okay it ain't gonna happen yeah yeah oh well um i i, I uh... I'll just I'll just go off in my direction. I don't want to go down there just for now because I feel there's a bitch coming on. Uh, I'm no, no, no. I, well, okay. So in in Laogar as well, we've got. You remember that we've got a um, there's a there's a there's a sheet. Uh, there's a there's a poster if you like with a lot of Chinese characters on, and yeah. uh, you've got the yin yang sim symbol. Anyway, there's four lines of t lines of uh you know, text if you like in, in chinese yes yeah. um, yeah. one of them is uh not t stance not eight stance yeah um, and one of them is i believe uh because there's four if, four things uh Lao will last if, for a thousand generations is that it yeah yeah my yeah um i'm sure it was written by the nazis yeah <laughs> um no that's that's the one and, and then <laughs> the what the not did you just say the nazis <laughs> well they they reckoned theirs would live for a thousand years oh that's the thousand year reich for yeah, god's there you sake go. oh, yeah goodness. okay so yeah there's that one that's the a star will live for a thousand years is it thousand if years? my en yeah if my enemy doesn't come i don't move yeah so go and explain that um well basically if you do the first attack you're open Right. so you know the, as soon as you throw a punch you're open above that hand and below it you've only got one other hand to protect you so where are you going to put it yeah so you've got to either put it below deciding on where the guy's going to hit you or you're going to have to put it above you to see where you know it's going to go okay. to see where the uh where the cover's going to be so 
yeah it's just simply that really it just means um if you if you wait to see what's going to happen and and you're capable then you are going to be able to you know defend against it yeah so it's it, it is more about defense than it is attack and and this is a question that we always we we do say to people you know because people say yeah but you know attacks the most important thing and 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 you go wait a minute wait a minute defenses are more important no 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 you'd rather get out there and attack so i always say to them okay in a competition how many points do you have to score to win and the answer of course is one yeah and then in the next question how many times do you have to defend yourself against someone who's trying to make that one point and the answer is obvious isn't it it isn't a load yeah you know hundreds yeah so therefore what's most important to practice defense well, you use yeah. it more mm -hmm. but you can only yeah. practice that defense if you have a good attack yes yes that's right you've got to be a good attacker but it doesn't mean that attacking is, you know, no. to every anyone's benefit. Yeah. So that's that's the way that works. So. Yeah, you have to have a good attacker. Of course you yeah. do. Yeah. But yeah. why do you have a good attacker, James? But, well, so you can. So you be can a be a defender. A, exactly. So you need to be a good defender. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, like, yeah, going that's back the answer to, to that one. Hey, going back to hand block number one. Just attack. Just reach. Yeah. Be yep. a good sorry I, you know um so we've there's <laughs> one more there's one more so we've got laugar live for a thousand years the thousand year reich we've got <laughs> <laughs> we've i shouldn't got, have said that should i really because shouldn't, shouldn't. now i'm just thinking yeah, of adolf yeah. you know yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, laugar live for a thousand years we've got uh, not t stands not eight stands um uh my enemy move i move not before and uh, yeah, the last if my, if my enemy doesn't come i don't move okay okay sorry S excuse me um yeah. <laughs> and we've all the last one is if i'm not very much mistaken the punch comes from the heart mouth yeah the okay. fist comes from the heart mouth okay yeah yeah what, so what does that mean well the heart mouth is the solar plexus okay and what what what's so significant about the solar plexus well it's 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 a gateway to the heart so you know what the idea is, is to protect your heart for god's sake you're like trying to draw blood from a stone sometimes <laughs> mr newbie yeah but that's all it is isn't it it's you are like gateway. you're like meg ryan on that parkinson interview she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't answer a question it's like mm. well that didn't i answer that question you did but that's like, it the fist is from the center yeah but i'm going to elaborate the fist is at the center so it's it's basically coming from the heart mouth yes right. that's that's so it, it has to come from the center it's it's not but, going it's got to go through the center you know when people do martial arts for the first time and their fist is by their waist upside down yeah yeah right and the reason the reason for that is simple training right by taking the fist forwards still upside down until the arm is almost straight and then twists at the end what you're getting is a dead straight punch if you were to turn that fist around as you began to punch the elbow would then become you know raised. protruded raised and protruded and you would end up punching in an arc you would basically be doing an, a hammer fist instead of a yep. straight punch exactly yeah. yeah and that's why the fist comes from the heart mouth so it comes through the center and then twists at the but, end yeah. but these the, but like you say to some people yeah but what about a lead jab yes but you've still got the other hand protecting you from there so that fist yeah. comes from the heart mouth yeah your lead jab is also your lead defense so it's yeah. it's your first line of defense yeah the most important thing is to protect the homeland isn't it yeah right and uh, you know send out your army by all means but you know you've still got to keep reserves yeah 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 it's when you lose your reserve that you've got a major problem right right it's um like you always said to me you know you got four armies you know your two arms your two legs yeah well, I, but, yeah i used to say you've got two arm uh, four armies you got two arms, arms and and two leggies <laughs> i i'm not kidding i went to a boxing i went to a boxing gym once and uh yeah. I, I was talking to the guy uh running it and he was like yeah, pff, legs they're useless Gah, legs useless you know i'm like really Are you for real i was like you know yeah because i'll just i'll just you know cover up with my elbow i'm like jesus christ buddy you you don't know what you're getting into like if you start bloody 
a good kicker against a boxer as well you know he's mm. gonna have he's gonna have twice the trouble you know but it's again it's that sort of like boxing he's strike. expecting you to kick high he's expecting yes, you to kick yes, high yes. so of, of course people would keep their elbows in and yeah. that would that would deter anyone from kicking high if you're going to kick someone's elbow it's going to bloody hurt yeah. but you're not necessarily going to kick that high so unless he wants to put his elbow down by his shin yeah. he's going to have a major problem yeah yeah. because you know it's it's phew, you could kick anything from your you know little toe upwards yeah. so yeah talking about lao gar mm -hmm. how has the style evolved in the uk in terms of you know um syllabus shall we say you know how have the sets changed at all have there any because oh yeah you yeah. like i'm not being funny you you go to any course or whatever you know you've got uh, you know 10 different ways of doing it you know this you know every person you speak to has got a different way of doing it um, yeah. in it so you know how has the style changed whilst it's been in the uk and i'll give you an example so from from the off you know the first set used to have uh five five techniques in it right mm -hmm. well the, the the way that it's changed basically is in the 80s probably the late 80s um everything sort of started uh, we started training a left-hand side for left-handed people mm. that that's basically it so they were extended so some the, the sets were extended and uh, you did a left-hand side as well so chop choy was extended the first set was extended to to increase the number of movements right. uh, the second set was extended to have the left side and then the right side kicking movements mm. um chop choy was extended to have a left hand side Fakum was never touched at the fourth set right the fifth set phalon chi had a left hand side added right and then after that the other two weren't oh the uh Lauga Lokabikun was was extended right. but bapa germ wasn't touched so yeah i, I but it when was, i was a yellow it, it was i was a yellow it, sash at that time i think but, it, but 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 back by June used to be after black sash didn't it uh no i wasn't a yellow sash. so i wrote i wrote a book hello um yes yes i got Sorry. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> back by was, was after black sash to answer your question i thought i was on a one-way <laughs> <laughs> no no sorry yeah it's it, yeah but because because in the earlier days there were other sets yeah. there was chup sow and there was um uh, another one before the fourth set uh yeah. uh, uh which was a white eyebrow form oh, wow. um it escapes me what it was called actually um uh so oh it was called chup sow that's right the first bit was chiao so far the uh the, the the freehand movement before the first set right. so yeah then chup sow was um a, a white eyebrow yeah. form allegedly so there, there were different things involved and then um it just became why Lao why, why why the why, why would you uh have a white eyebrow form uh, well when remember when the big cafe was started musty air wanted to keep the style um he didn't really want to um sort of promote the style or give the style away if you like yeah. and so he he sort of went the same direction that the bkfa had started in because he wasn't he wasn't there at the start of the yeah BKFA. yeah of course yeah, yeah, yeah he was invited later so that they could actually do martial arts yeah. because at the time <laughs> yeah at the time it was just a made-up thing it, it, it's you know it's a typical you know businessman uh he thinks he knows a bit about martial arts so he's he's yeah. you know he's he's very keen to promote it etc etc mm -hmm. fine whatever promoted karate and so on and and then saw the kung fu boom went for it yeah. and and sort of created that kind of thing so yeah you know are you still sucking that damn tablet no oh. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so all i can hear is you chewing yeah get to the back of the sorry class. sorry sorry stop eating sweets naughty <laughs> yeah so go on what were you saying about the uh um does the, you, you're talking about the uh the businessman who's promoted uh the British yeah he just yeah yeah so it, it didn't have i mean it had karate people teaching kung fu and so right. on yeah i mean and of course people that, like that have continued to try to do it and yeah. made a complete hash of it 
so it's it's um it just that's how it started out and and then the syllabus became you know the formal syllabus so, uh, came to it into right. effect uh, as master yao sort of developed right. the so did master yao uh teach the white eyebrow form uh, i believe he did right. um i wasn't with master yao at that time i was with right. steve faulkner right. so uh, i only learned it um i don't know who was teaching it okay um but i learned it from steve faulkner and yeah. so on so see um so what, what it wasn't a very long set and it had a it had the, the a very elaborate bow at the beginning oh right <laughs> the, not yeah. as elaborate as a jeet kune do bow it, it it was a bit like a hungar bow oh, okay. a, you know yeah. really big big swing into the one side bowing yeah. stepping and bowing and then swinging to the other side stepping yeah. and bowing and then swinging back stepping back and then finishing completely okay. you know it was yeah. quite a big elaborate um bow yeah yeah wow. right, so that's it's, how it yeah oh it's funny how it's uh how it's kind of ch changed what see like Oh, that was that was only for the chup sao. That wasn't for the lao gar. That was for the chup sao. Yeah, bow. right. So no, but yeah. when, when I was talking, sorry, uh, I was talking about the the sets being done on the left hand side or the rest. Oh of yeah, them. yeah, because yeah. A, a big a big thing about people who don't necessarily train traditional uh, martial arts per se is they'll look at a form, right, or a pattern, cat or whatever, and they'll think to themselves, all oh, right. That has been taught from generation to generation to generation to generation when in actual fact it probably wasn't you know i i, I have no doubt that the techniques were, were yes. always taught yes and, this is and what i'm, I'm saying sure, this is what i'm saying the uh, techniques. yeah I, I can't say because i i wasn't there i can't say yeah. that whether the 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 actual sets were taught in the same order or with the same techniques that they yeah. are now um but the i'm sure that um you know they, they're pretty similar if not the same um, i'm sure some of them may have been added i'm sure some of them may have been split even you know you could have uh, two sets uh, one set split into two yeah. uh, it, it's uh, that's only conjecture it's yeah. only you know possibility i'm not i'm not saying that i mean as far as i know um i'm sure that i've asked master how this at some point in time i think the sets were always there but you know that obviously they have changed mm. and you know that you know you're talking about sayings in kung fu you know the, yeah. the impermanence and void are the only two things yeah, that yeah. are def definite yeah you know i love those and, yeah explain to people yeah, what they are well impermanence is is nothing stays the same and void is is it's open to to all sorts of interpretation mm. so you know you've got to open your mind to to learn it you have to be an empty vessel yeah a bit like me mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right really yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's nothing up but there. <laughs> yeah we, we were talking about chinese and that that it's kind of an anecdote here that we're talking about chinese and people say oh you know you, you've got to learn the chinese and everything you go you wait till you get to the black sash grading so you go to the black sash grading and master yo's there going you know um you know so march intact whatever and you know one step from kick and then um and then it's it's john russell's turn to speak and it's like <laughs> Gene, <laughs> and, and he's he's oh. trying he's, he's he's doing his best to speak with a chinese kind of accent yeah and and mastio's going to look at him <laughs> looking at him thinking what the bloody hell <laughs> you can see mastio's face going what <laughs> so it, it is it's only fun it's just funny you know oh, because jo john is so dedicated and so yeah. into it oh, yeah. that, that everybody knows he's eccentric everybody knows he's is a great you know he's, he's a great character john russell is Listen, a brilliant I, character i remember the the, the, the the summer course with uh with with john uh, with a <laughs> yeah. microphone pack on him yeah. <laughs> 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 like, what <laughs> you can't understand. the acoustics are just terrible in some holes but it's funny yeah yeah brilliant yeah, yeah. no i'd love that but, but john has always been a, a really um dedicated individual yeah, and yeah. he used to travel from bristol every week to the center in birmingham yeah. and eventually yeah. he got a job in um he was a teacher he got the job yeah. in uh college in um in in near birmingham yeah no i i i, I honestly I've, I've met him once and i was with mm. you when we were at a competition 
and mm. uh, you, I think you introduced me and you looked at me like up and down and then just totally blanked me. I was like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I didn't expect anything. Like I was like, you know, he said, like, who's this? Who's this? Whatever. <laughs> well, next. When I, when I was, <laughs> yeah. I know my when, place, Mr. Newby. I know my place. When I was living in Scotland, I and and it became very difficult to get lessons because I would I would go to Birmingham for my lessons with private lessons with Master Yao, and yeah. uh, it was on a Friday. I would go on a Friday, so my lesson was at two o'clock, and you can imagine the drive down from Scotland oh, meant God. I had to leave quite early. Yeah. So my daughter wasn't able to go to school on the fridays every friday i went to a lesson right and that's then the school got in touch with us and says how come you, you, your daughter's not at school uh on fridays you know <laughs> and so i kind of had to nail that you know to put that knock yeah. that on the head and say okay can i get lessons any other time i couldn't do it so john was happily was willing to um to take me uh for private lessons on a saturday right. which meant that i could go down on the Friday night after yeah. my daughter had finished school, yeah. sleep at my friend's house, and then um, do the lesson with John on yeah. a Saturday morning, 8.30. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, which, yeah, and I used to pay him with a uh, cup of tea and a flapjack. Oh, see, <laughs> Cause that's, that's, that's the, where I was going wrong all these years. That's the way, that's the way John is, you know, yeah. he just had no, yeah. no interest in, you know, any money or anything for the... Yeah. lessons and yeah. he just was happy to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and a, yeah. a flat flapjack he had uh, when we sat down and had a went to a cafe yeah so yeah and it was that's a lovely story yeah, interesting that's, that's, yeah, that's really nice <laughs> it's it's especially funny how you put your kung fu training before your daughter's education but... <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> well you know. gotta make some well, sacrifices it, uh, you know i i could not go up to scotland and still and not train which I is know. why eventually i had to leave scotland because yeah. You know, but I was still teaching it. I was flying up there every month to to do the courses and gradings eventually, and so on. Yeah. And uh, and obviously, I left people that I thought I could trust in control. Well. And uh, yeah. Well, his well. Rest is history. Well, I was I was snooping around the other day on various social media sites, and I came across a a post from one of your former Scottish students. Oh, and yeah. I, it, it intrigued me, and I'll tell you why it intrigued me, because, well, as I read it out, you'll see, you, you, maybe you could fill in a gap, you know. <laughs> so, um, no names, okay. but I'll read, I'll read it verbatim. It says, uh, last night I was honoured to receive this UK Martial Arts Show Hall of Fame Award. It was a fitting recognition for my 31 years studying and teaching Kung Fu most of which wouldn't have been possible without such fantastic mentors and students. I'd like to thank my Sifu, Mark Houghton, for instilling belief and passion into my Kung Fu, Stephen Burton and Anthony Rushton for continuing to inspire me as a martial artist, and to all my Kung Fu brothers and sisters around the world who I have trained with over the years. <laughs> now, I know for a fact <laughs> that, that he trained with you for how long <laughs> 15 years of his 31 <laughs> years now why on I, earth were you not mentioned that's what i want to know what, first of all i'd like to know where the 31 years came from <laughs> but oh my uh, God. Listen, why wasn't i mentioned yeah, why, why wasn't it mentioned why weren't you mentioned in that that's uh, what, I well, we were, what have you done what have you done to these to some of these ex-students eh? These, other than teach were, them kung fu what have you done what have you, you done? can tell from that when someone does that okay and begins to uh, search desperately i mean basically i know who you're talking about and and i did you know have a e email from him very nice email i have to say saying how he thanks me and was dedicated and so on for the last and he really enjoyed so many years of you know he's the one that coined 15 years i don't know how long he, st he stayed for yeah. uh, he, he came to me when it was an orange sash yeah. so that gives you about a year so that's like 16 years and then he was with me for 15 years and then the next thing i know they were training with uh, this steve burton guy yeah. and anthony rushton who does tai chi yeah. yeah yeah and he and and basically they were um yeah they just started 
but I suddenly found out I suddenly found out that Scotland wasn't anything to do with me anymore right. apparently so that, oh. that's basically the, sh the sh long and short of it but yeah. all it no, well, all well, I can I, my point was why weren't you mentioned well I mean you know it's not like all I can say to you, raise you from history you're not like well because simply because Marty I, McFly I, yeah <laughs> simply because I gave him I told him what I thought okay and uh, which uh, you know he betrayed my trust as oh. as sometimes people do after 15 years he betrayed my trust and then and I told him so and uh, although the letter he sent me was fine uh, I just told him the truth mm. and and the people don't like the truth but the, the problem is with someone like that who then goes searching for identity and they they desperately need someone to recognize their ability and yet they hide their history from people yeah. but you can't hide your history you see because if he spent 15 years with me and he's only been i mean it's only been seven years okay since they 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 did that to me yeah. then all i can say to you is everybody that trained with him while he was with me all the people that were in scotland that trained with me and him under me know where he comes from yeah. they know he's lying they know he's you know trying to um, change history yeah. but you can't do that i'm sorry See? it just doesn't work like that yeah yeah and uh, and so you know he can thank people but when you see them on YouTube on their knees bowing to someone with a packet of money in their hand to try to gain recognition. And of course, you understand that they're trying to you continue to use the name of the style Laogar. Simply, they, you know, Yao doesn't like that happening. And, and he tries to stop people doing that. Yeah. And so, of course, then they go, well, you know, if we can join, you know, people who do Hongar, then you know as well as I do that Hongar and has certain aspects of Lao, you know, Lao Gar Kuhn. Well, as a Lao, one of their as forms. A form, yeah, it's called one of their forms. Yeah. Or yeah. So then they can justify using the name Lao. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's just politics. Yeah. But but it it all comes out in the wash at the end of the day and and the, the truth is known by the students and and it really is well, sad for me when i, 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 I know I, those yeah. students yeah. had to follow that that fate. no i just think you know if you, if you you know be honest with yourself if 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 you you know you were a major part of these people's lives you know and uh, for them not to acknowledge you in your teaching because you know you don't subscribe to the Sifu. What did the letter say again? Oh God, do I have to read it again? Do I well, just did it, it say anything about for his teaching or whatever? Mm, no, no, no. Well, I mean, you know, recognition for you know, happy to. It was a fitting recognition for my thirty-one years studying and teaching kung fu. There you go, studying and teaching. Well, the thirty-one years I, again. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't know where that came from. Wow. Uh, but. Um, he, who well, taught I, him to teach yeah who <laughs> no, but, you know, yeah, uh, who yeah. Him. But and i remember why? him coming to the nationals and and apologizing to me and wish he hadn't have done this and done that and done the other and in the next breath he asked me to come and do a course <laughs> for him <laughs> and i told him where to get off yeah, that, yeah. it's just how could you possibly steal someone's uh, organization from under their feet because I, I had no you know no way of going back up to scotland and so on and and then you know <laughs> sorry i have to pause for laughter um and then in the next breath go would you come and do a course for me like as if he wants me to work for him in some way <laughs> and i'm just thinking do you know what and 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 it's he wasn't the only one there were other people like that and i just feel so sad for them yeah. because well, they know they they know yes, what happens yes. but you haven't been inducted to the martial arts hall of fame I've had people inducted <laughs> to the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. All it is is bloody uh, Martial Arts Illustrated, James. That's all it is. And it's run by Taekwondo people. Oh, well. So when you go in the, the Hall of Fame, you get a little certificate. Rebecca did it. 
Did she? But she 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 had a good reason because she you know she was a good fighter and a good you know um, representative of, of martial arts and she she did really well and she you know she she won fights not just the world championships ix ix so she came second in that but she she's got lists and lists of of trophies from all sorts of different organizations and yeah. you know she went fighting with the eight the the you know the national a, a team squad national squad of, of the british kung fu association yeah. and um yeah she got she got a this hall of fame thing they haven't asked me <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh dear me! Oh my God, that is yeah. funny. Oh, sorry, that's the beeper. That's the beep. Sorry, that must be. The, is that the uh, bitchy beeper that just detected us being bitchy? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> uh, I have. I. I. I really have to say that uh, you know I don't. I don't feel. Well, I don't feel for these people, those kind of people at all. I mean, there are. I mean, obviously, over a period of time, we're going to be talking about all sorts of the past and you know we get we've had some great experiences but we've had some pretty nasty mm -hmm. experiences as well i think anyone who teaches people who then go on to become teachers themselves yeah. will experience you know the the tenacity and the aggression of of people who don't get their own way yeah. right and it's as simple as that and and when that happens and then they 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 set off to start their own path but they're desperately searching for new people to recognize them you know some why don't you just start your own thing like other morons do yeah. and just set up your own thing and just call yourself a master but all they want to do is just get recognized by someone desperately recognized mm -hmm. and then recognize them as their teacher as opposed to their their own yeah you know they got no respect for anybody if you can do that to one individual that, that taught you for so many years you're going to do that to someone who's you know just took your money off you yeah. simple as that so yeah. you know i just feel sorry for the people and you know it, it's such a sad affair in in martial arts in general and, and i suppose in other walks of life as well yeah yeah but i only well, know martial arts well you know i think you know i I'm I'm grateful every day for when uh, you know for having you as my teacher. I must say, but I have a lot of people that do yeah. you know say really nice things, so really lovely, yeah. lovely anecdotes yeah. and so on. Yeah. So, no, but, uh, the occasional ones like that. Maybe come, maybe get, we should we should get some of these anecdotes and read them out because we're just turning into a couple of bitches. <laughs> 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 I think I yeah. think you know. Uh, yeah, we should we should try. And I don't think I don't think I bitched. I, I think I was. I just I'm just telling the facts. Okay. I think the important thing is, you know, it, people will know the facts, but they don't need to listen to me to know the facts. They, you can see it there in in whatever you just read. You can see that he's hiding the truth. When you hide the truth, it's called a lie. Mm. <laughs> you know, so he's living a lie. Well, good luck. It's yeah. fine. But the students, no different. Yeah. Now, obviously, well, some when, students are probably told, you know. Oh, I was just going to say, there's no doubt in my mind that people are, are coerced into this. And of course, it doesn't help when you have situation when uh, people around you are, are set to profit from uh, this. Uh, um, betrayal if you want mm. uh, I think using the word betrayal is probably absolutely fine mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah but it's it, yeah when you get people like that but isn't yeah. that, well, I mean honestly isn't the problem with you though because this is uh, you know this this is happening <laughs> <laughs> it's happened a few times. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it happened one, in one big go. Yeah, I have that's to say, true, that's no, true. no, it's no. You know, someone says to me, one, one, one of them, uh, a friend of this guy's. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to give him the name. It's not even worth naming them. But um, you know, one of them said, you know, oh, you should, you should, you know, hear what the big cafe really thinks of you, or you know, your you know student or friends or whatever and uh, did he not think for a second that if you get to a point where you have so much um success if you like if you 
want to call it that we did build scotland as a whole and we built a massive area down here and so on or i did if you like yeah. the, the the simple fact is people are going to be envious yeah. they're going they're, all the people that that are are going to talk like that <laughs> and don't you think that the only people who are going to talk to him like that are going to be people like him who have also you know they don't like what's you know has been fed them or given them yeah. so they 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 obviously are going to uh, support you yeah. know that camp if you want mm -hmm. so so they're obviously going to have that kind of attitude but you know any anybody uh, anybody who wants to ask me any questions about anything like that i don't care who they are uh, they can ask me and i can give them the truth they can tell me whatever yeah do you ever did you you know because obviously you've had some you know pretty bad bad shit happen man um did you ever ever lose total faith in 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 your pursuance of of the martial art did you ever think no you know as it was just not worth it or no you know. no i never never i never lost faith in the martial arts um you sometimes as a teacher lose faith in teaching simply because you know i, I would imagine it happens to a school teacher when you know they get accused of something or whatever and they just think you know what i don't want to I, I don't even want to bother again and and yeah there were times when i really felt like yeah i'm not interested in in uh, teaching and then i guess you know i had a lot of support from my family i had a lot of support from my wife and um you know kind of on the one hand it was like you know you know you're better than this you can do this you can do that and then on the other hand it was like told you so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so it was uh, but yes i did lose a lot of belief in 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 certain aspects uh, in associations and so on yeah. uh, there was an awful lot that went on behind the scenes that uh, shouldn't have have happened yeah. um you know uh, there was there was very little support in those days mm -hmm. and and that's really why i just thought you know what i'm not going to sit back i'm not going to just let everything just flow over me mm -hmm. i'm going to go and do something about it and so i i set about uh the prospect of of looking at uh, other areas to teach and i thought you know there's a really big area it, the only problem is it's about six thousand miles away <laughs> 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 oh well so know. yeah so i i decided i i would um i would treat you know make sure that the family got a good future because you know i didn't see a future um for me but 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 you, uh, know, there. you, but you never i mean you still have you you will always have a lot of love for uh for for, for this for the for the for your training in this country in the uk yeah and oh, for, of course for your yeah. friends and all, all the rest of yeah them. yeah I, oh yeah i would i mean i'm i'm really keen i mean i do it a lot on um on what's it called uh, messenger I, mm. I i teach yeah i still teach classes on messenger and so on i still meet uh with people talk to them obviously we're in contact all the time and so on um we you know there are that i'm i also talk to uh my guy in um missouri as well and uh yeah it's it, the, the technology is is doing a great yeah. uh, favor to us it's helping yeah. us a lot and of course we will be doing an awful lot of video footage an awful lot of, we'll be doing some video um instruction yeah um uh, we have no choice it's it's the way of the world today yeah. and i just I, and when i see people and the kind of people that do these videos teaching what they believe to be you know the right thing and some of them they haven't even got grades in it you know there's one guy that we, which i am going to cover over my you know because it's it's critique okay i don't mean to attack people but if someone deserves to be critiqued then then they're going to be critiqued mm -hmm. uh especially uh, you know if i know um you know th their history as i do because mm -hmm. you know i've taught an awful lot of people yeah. and um how many people do you think you've taught over the years out of oh, interest there is no number thousands absolutely yeah. thousands 
yeah you, you teach thousands of people over the years it's been 40 years yeah. and uh, yeah absolutely thousands and 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 some of the people you remember with with you know absolute you know joy and you remember how and you remember they're growing up you know you can teach someone when they're six years old and then you're walking in in the national competition one time and some big bearded guy shouts at you from the back and say steve you know how you taught me when i was five years old and you're looking at him he's like in his 30s and and you're thinking my god I'm old. I said, <laughs> I looked at him, I looked at one guy, you know, um, one particular memory I have when he's, you know, someone shouted like that. I walked past and went, hi, how are you? He goes, hello, Steve. I says, how are you? I says, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, oh, you taught me when I was five. <laughs> oh, and I thought, yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people like that. And they've they've got their kids training as yeah. well. And unfortunately not with me because, you know, it's not possible anymore. But uh, I still keep in touch with people I've known for, I don't know, 40 years ago. Yeah. I still got students. I mean, Martin, I, I, I taught him, you know, 30 years now yeah. as well. So yeah. um, they, they become close friends and uh, yeah, I, I keep in touch with a lot of people. Yeah. But but even people that you barely know, you see them on, you know, they're on my Facebook. And, and these these are people that were students many many years ago, and you just you always keep in touch with them. Yeah. And 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 so yeah, there are some great yeah great memories. And uh, you know these these little you know hiccups when you get a, a bad student who does bad things, they they're so you know few and far between, mm. so rare. They're not worth talking about. Yeah. So. Well, hey, guess what? We finished on a positive. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. guys thank you so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast and if you don't want us to talk about ourselves send in some questions yeah. if you're sending questions we'll be able to answer them okay? <laughs> anyway thanks a lot guys take care bye 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 your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns.